official opposition party, the Democratic uh, Alliance, has uh, been losing prominent black leaders. There's uh, increased curiosity about where the party is headed and whether the party leadership is accommodating to largely black leaders. Yesterday, another a black prominent figure resigned from the party. After 15 years in the DA, Mbalinduri left the party and stepped down as a member of the provincial legislature in Kwazulu Natal. The three year old who lost the party's presidential race against the incumbent, John Stienhazen in 2020, will be taking a break from formal politics to discuss this. We are now joined uh, by political analyst Tessa Dooms. A very good afternoon to you and thank you so very much for joining us here on SABC News. Good afternoon. Well, we saw a very diplomatic letter of resignation uh, from Mbalin Duli yesterday. What were your sort of initial thoughts on the fact that uh, she is uh, resigning? One wonders um, if it is, you know, really sort of just to focus on more of the groundwork, as she put it, and to focus more on the people on the ground. I mean, what were your thoughts when you, when you realized that she was indeed resigning from the DA? Yeah, I think anybody who's followed um, politics in the DA, and particularly Mbalin Julie's own um, journey as, as, as a political activist and a leader, would not have been too surprised um, that Mbali resigned yesterday. I think it comes um, through a long history of, um, in her own words, as she says, um, having you know engaged with the party in many ways, spoken up, um, and not necessarily finding a climate within the party that has been conducive to differing voices, differing opinions. And I do think Mbali's um, instance here is, is, is particular in that it hasn't so much been a question about just black leadership when it comes to somebody like Mbali. I think um, from her days as a youth um, leader in the party, it was then about her age. And, you know, um, even um, yesterday, actually, when she resigned, I think it was Douglas Gibson who made a comment about her age and about her as, you know, not being mature enough and being a junior politician mm. um, is the word he used. Um, and not being able to then, you know, represent the party at the highest levels. And so I think there are multiple ways in which people um, have experienced levels of um, exclusion from, from the DA and its leadership. And you have to ask questions about what kind of political culture they've created that makes people who have really, you know, devoted um, almost half of her life yeah. to that party say that this is not the place where she feels like she can connect with the people of South Africa and take forward um, the ambitions she has for creating the South Africa she wants. I mean, many people would read this as, as a sort of race issue, and I wonder if, if it is the case. I mean, you know, you, you, you raise a very important uh, point uh, that this was attributed to her not being mature enough to represent uh, the party at high levels. But in that regard, one would be mentoring such and, and, and growing uh, such people within the party. I mean, as you say, she's been there uh, for almost half her life, and I would imagine other people who've been in the party for more than half their lives would be groomed uh, for, for higher office. So one would automatically and I see a lot of people on social media reading this as, as, as some sort of racial issue. And, and can we indeed read it as such? Yeah, I think that there's part of it can be read as a racial issue if you look at it in the broader context. Um, if you think about um, somebody like Alindi Ware Mazaboko in a very similar position to Mbalin Tuli, who entered into the DA, um, you know, in, in their late teens, early 20s, while at university, and really grew, I mean, their political journey with the party. And so you would, you would think that a party like that would see, and also, I mean, the DA has been given a lot of credit, and I think a due credit, for having things like their young leaders programs that have brought in young black people. Um, at some point, I think particularly before the EFF came into um, the national legislature, mm. the DA was easily the party with the youngest black leaders in um, national government in, in the legislature. So you, you can't say that the DA has not had young black leaders, particularly they have come through the ranks. But it seems that at, the, at a particular point, when those people are ready to take on, you know, um, contest the the old guard, contest the people who've been in the party, and those people have been white. Um, there has been this kind of blocking of those people as they come through the ranks, the Mbali Julies, the Lindiwe Mazabukos. And I, I mean, there are many factors that make up their identity, but certainly that they're black women, um, you know, is, is something that's hard to miss. And that other black leaders um, who are men who have left afterwards, who are older even, have said, you know, being being a black leader in this party is difficult. We have to consider that um, it's, it's a, there's a cultural issue in terms of, you know, the old guard of the party and new people coming in. But there's also a matter of who makes up that old guard still seems to be 
um, white people in the main of a particular privileged position. Yeah. Um, just going back to my uh, initial question, the first uh, question in terms of the fact that, you know, we, we, we seem to have gotten a sort of a PC diplomatic uh, letter from Mbali Ntulu, but there were hints of, you know, underlying issues. And one wonders if we're likely to see, you know, some sort of uh, blowout uh, later on, like we did in the case of, you know, Pumzile Van Damme, like we saw with uh, Musi Mamani, uh, like we saw with uh, Patricia DeLille. I'm trying to think of uh, more of the prominent uh, uh, black figures uh, within the DA or will we, I mean, we've seen her sort of being diplomatic throughout or will this kind of just die down and end there? I'm also thinking about uh, Lindy Mazibugo as well. Will it just end there? Um, I think it, it's likely to be the last and I'll, I'll tell you why. Mm. Um, Mbali Duli has never been somebody who has, um, you know, been diplomatic just for the sake of doing that. When she has felt that she needed to speak up um, and push back against the, the, the party, even publicly. Um, she's done that. I think she's been very outspoken and very vocal. And so um, I think she has said the things that she wanted to say. I, I appreciated the letter for its ability to kind of put into to context that um, there have been moments and issues that have come up that have been in the public domain um, and that there's no point to rehash those um, as she moves forward. So I would be particularly surprised if um, she felt the need to kind of go into um, a mode of either, you know, dragging the, the party's name or all of that. I, I, I would be surprised if that's the route she took. Um, what would be um, concerning would be if the party and party leaders um, in, in the future endeavors that she takes up come after her or say things that are disparaging. But I think the party um, seems to have taken um, a very good approach even to her leaving. We saw a letter coming from um, the DA in, the, in, in KZN um, that was very cordial. I, I watched the interviews with her former party leader in the province, and they seem to have left on really, really good terms. Yeah. So I would be surprised if we see that kind of back and forth um, but we, we must never take away from the fact that they really um, and she's really had a kind of relationship with the party that's been very open. And so I would be surprised if that happens in future. Yeah. As, as I was reading uh, that, that that letter, uh, Tessa picked up that um, she was critical about party politics. And automatically, I just thought to myself, does this um, imply that, you know, and I saw a lot of people trying to read into what could be her possible next move. And I thought, I wonder if this means that, you know, she'd want to be running as an independent a candidate later on, especially now that that's starting to gain some sort of uh, uh, momentum, being pushed indeed by uh, the likes of uh, Musi Mamani. I guess there are all sorts of iterations for Mbali's future, but I think the thing that she said continually yesterday um, was that there is there is an issue around our political system and our political culture with parties and the way they operate, mm. and that um, she's not drawn to a party. So I think that does say a lot. Um, what route that then takes in terms of her political future, I think, is going to be um, up for her up for her to decide. Um, I think that independent candidacy is definitely an option um, that she could she could go down as many others could. Um, but I do think it's up to Mbali to to set that course for herself. She's been very clear that what she wants to do at this point is engage with people and communities. And so um, let's see where that road leads her. All right, uh, Tessa, pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, availing yourself uh, to us here on SABC News, ma'am. All right, pleasure. that is uh, Tessa Dooms. It's a political analyst there weighing in on uh, the goings-on within the uh, Democratic Alliance on the back of uh, Mbali Ntuli, a veteran of the party, uh, resigning uh, yesterday.